Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Bite Size Buell. My name's Mike. I'm an educator with Buell Planetarium at Carnegie Science Center. Uh, and today we're going to give you a taste of the Buell Planetarium at home. Uh, I'm using a software called Stellarium, uh, which is a free software which you can download uh, even on your cell phone to take outside and uh, move around and track the night sky. We're going to use that software to explore the sky on New Year's Eve. Uh, so let's dive right in. Uh, I've got my date and time set to December 31st at 6 p.m. And when you head outside, if you're facing south, you'll find two prominent planets in the evening sky. Looking at our screen, you can see essentially a digital star chart. If you imagine this as a clock, uh, up at 12 p.m. at the top is north, and that would be behind you. Uh, down at 6 p.m., we are looking at the southern horizon. Uh, and on the southwestern horizon, uh, just behind the setting sun, we'll find two planets, Jupiter and Saturn. Jupiter is in the constellation Aquarius, uh, and Saturn is passing in front of the constellation Capricornus. Let's zoom in and take a closer look at these two uh, beautiful lights. Now to do that, uh, if you are uh, a Stellarium user, I'm gonna head to my search window, and while I can see Jupiter in the night sky, I'm going to type Jupiter in to my search box to do a nice smooth zoom. So we've locked on here. We are facing the southwest. Let's zoom in a little bit closer to the horizon so we can see what we're looking at. Jupiter will be one of the first uh, bright lights that you see in the evening sky. Of course, it's not giving off its own light. It's reflecting light from the sun. Uh, and Jupiter's passing in front of the constellation Aquarius in our evening sky. Let's zoom in for a closer look at Jupiter. Jupiter is one of my favorite places to talk about. Through a telescope uh, on December 31st, you'll be able to see perhaps the, the stripes, the ammonia-rich cloud bands. Jupiter is a giant uh, ball of clouds and gas made of mostly hydrogen and helium gas, like our own star, the sun. But you'll be able to see a few pinpricks of light nearby as well and those are the four Galilean moons to the right we can see Ganymede and Callisto very close to each other on the left we can see Io and Europa these four moons were discovered by Galileo in January of 1610 uh, so on a cold winter's night actually a, a month or so of winter's evenings uh, he was peering out through his spyglass toward Jupiter tracking these pinpricks of light and realized they were orbiting the planet. That changed everything in astronomy uh, when we realized that Earth wasn't the center of it all and we had empirical evidence that another world, Jupiter, had its own moons in orbit around it. All right, let's take a closer look at this beautiful cosmic holiday treat for us here. The, the orb of Jupiter, you can see those awesome swirling cloud bands. Hopefully you get outside and can spot it. Uh, it's visible to the naked eye. Through a telescope, you might get this view uh, if the sky is clear. And if you want to participate in the exploration of Jupiter, you can hop on NASA's Juno website. Juno is a spacecraft in orbit around this gas giant right now. And it has a citizen science camera. That citizen science camera is dedicated to taking photos, uh, which are determined through crowdsourcing. You can actually put your own photo into that website, submit it. Say you took a photo through your telescope, put your cell phone or camera on a telescope, took a photo of Jupiter, send it in to the Juno Cam website, uh, and NASA might pick your photo and then tell Juno to look in the same spot. So it's your chance to actually help NASA determine what to look at next on the planet Jupiter, uh, which is, I think, pretty awesome. Jupiter's gravitational pull is staggering, being the largest planet in the solar system so big all the other planets would fit inside. Uh, Jupiter really helps us out by acting as a cosmic vacuum cleaner. It vacuums up dangerous asteroids and comets uh, before they could reach the inner solar system where Earth uh, exists. So life on Earth really owes a debt to Jupiter being the vacuum cleaner of the solar system. All right, now while we're facing south, we're going to give a shout out to the second largest planet in the solar system. You'll see that a little, a little bit lower in the sky, a little bit fainter. It's nearly twice as far away from us as Jupiter, and that's the planet Saturn. I'm 
just going to lock on to Saturn as well and zoom in. This has been a great year to see the rings of Saturn. The north face of those rings has been tilted towards Earth. Near the top, you might be able to make out uh, a little bit of an angled shape to the pattern of, of clouds as they race around in Saturn's tremendous atmosphere. Saturn's North Pole actually has a hexagon shape to it. It's a storm system, a massive storm system bigger than Earth. It's six-sided, it's a hexagon. It's being pinched and pulled by surrounding storm systems. But Saturn's most famous for its rings. Uh, through a telescope, they'll look like that beautiful golden phonograph uh, with a few grooves in it. Those grooves are gaps in the ring system. And there are even tiny moons moving around in those gaps, shepherding material around them. Uh, they're just big enough, they create their own sort of HOV lanes, as it were, moving in gaps in the rings, moving the other ice and dust and rocks out of the way, clearing their own path, moving through the rings in those gaps. So I hope you get outside around 6 p.m. and take in the splendor of Jupiter and Saturn. Uh, but we're going to advance. The planets will start the countdown on New Year's Eve. Uh, but let's ring in the new year with some nebulae. Uh, we're going to advance time. I'm going to head up to the top of my display here. I'm set for December 31st. Uh, we have military time here. Uh, so I'm at 18 at 6 p.m. I'm going to advance us through the evening sky. We're facing south. I'm advancing one hour at a time. 8, 9, 10, 11. And now we are at midnight. Happy New Year. If you head outside uh, to ring in the New Year, and face south. Your journey will begin with the Orion constellation right here. You can start things off with Orion. We have three stars that form Orion's belt. And if you're facing south in the winter, Orion is kind of like a welcome sign with various arrows pointing off in different directions. Uh, it will point the way and help you wayfind to other things in the evening sky. So when you head outside, find the constellation Orion Look for the three stars that form Orion's belt. Uh, you'll see a bright blue giant named Rigel. That's the knee of Orion. To the ancient Greeks, uh, Orion was a hunter. You can almost imagine here a man with his shield off to the right here and, and holding a sword. Up in his shoulder is the red giant Betelgeuse. And while all these stars might look white at first, give your eyes some time to adapt. Uh, you'll start to see the blue and especially the red stars really starting to glow a, a golden red color. We can use the three stars in Orion's belt to point the way, as I said, to other things. Uh, and if you draw a line with me to the right, you'll come directly to another red giant. Its name is Aldebaran. That's the eye of the bull, Taurus the bull. That zodiac constellation is known for its horns, and Aldebaran forms the eye. Over here is perhaps my favorite object in the night sky, the ear of the bull. Uh, it's a star cluster known as the Pleiades. That's going to be our grand finale today. Uh, I'm going to come back to Orion, but don't let me forget about that. <laughs> Let's come back to Orion. So we used the three stars here to find Aldebaran. We went down to find the bright blue giant Rigel. We went up from Orion's belt to find Betelgeuse. Now, if you look directly below the three stars, you may see a faint fuzzy patch in the night sky. That is the Orion Nebula. See if you give your eyes some time in the dark to adapt, and if you can see that slight fuzzy patch. I'll give you a moment to see if you can find it on our screen. Uh, and I'm going to go searching for it as well. Now you'll notice that I just typed in M42, that's for Messier 42, uh, in honor of Charles Messier, uh, who first cataloged lots of different uh, deep sky objects, uh, many of which are known today to be nebula. Uh, one of those is the Great Orion Nebula, right beneath Orion's belt. Uh, we're going to imagine we are looking through a telescope now and zooming towards the Orion Nebula. 
We're moving beyond the constellation Orion to something much bigger, but it's in the same direction in space, and it's named the Orion Nebula. And away we go. Here we have now the names of the three stars in Orion's belt. On attack, on a lamb, and Taka. But let's zoom in on the Orion Nebula. This is a massive stellar nursery. It's a little over a thousand light years from Earth. Now a light year is the distance it takes light to, that light can travel in one year. And the Orion Nebula is 24 light years across. So light traveling from one end to the other would take 24 years. That's how massive this is. And this is an area where new stars are being born, a stellar nursery. When we image the Orion Nebula, we see lots of beautiful red color, that's hydrogen gas in the nebula, uh, as well as pockets of blue and violet. And that's radiation from very hot stars, uh, very luminous stars, they're known as O-class stars, and a lot of their radiation is uh, principally given off in ultraviolet wavelengths. Uh, but we see lots of uh, blue and visible violet uh, as well, kind of punctuating the nebula, seeing where these new stars are being born. All right, like I said, we can use the belt of Orion to find the way in the night sky. To the right, we found Aldebaran, Taurus the bull. Uh, we can go from Orion's belt to two other bright stars here. Sirius is actually uh, the brightest star in the evening sky. Uh, Sirius is known as the dog star. It's part of a constellation known as Canis Major, the big dog. Procyon, this little star up here, is part of a constellation known as Canis Minor, the little dog. Now, in between those two hunting dogs, those two companions to Orion, is a very faint constellation uh, that I've highlighted here. Its name is Monoceros, and that means one horn. It's, uh, that's Greek, essentially, for an animal that's a, a unicorn or related to a unicorn. Now, this faint constellation uh, includes another deep sky object that we're going to go searching for, another nebula. All right, so we're setting course uh, just to the left of Orion's shoulder and the red giant Betelgeuse. And let's see what we can find through a telescope. We've come to the Rosette Nebula. This is another stellar nursery. We have lots of stars being born here. Uh, and these stars, again, lots of O-type stars that are super hot, they give off large amounts of radiation. Uh, that radiation, in turn, is exciting uh, the gas in the nebula, and so those gases are now emitting radiation themselves. We call this an emission nebula. So we have this dense cloud of material with lots of newborn stars. Uh, the stars that compose it are glowing. Uh, they're, of course, energizing the gas and dust around them. Uh, that's glowing, too, and giving off this, this beautiful coloration. At the center of this nebula, we have an open star cluster. Uh, that's where we can have up to a few thousand stars that all form in a giant cloud, and they're roughly the same age, and they're bound together. They move through space almost as a unit. They're loosely bound by gravity. Uh, some stars travel solo, like our sun. In a star cluster, a group of stars can be moving together through space, kind of loosely bound together by gravity. And the petals of this beautiful rose are the stellar nursery you see where new stars are being formed. Now I should mention that if you were to look through a telescope at the Rosette Nebula, it might not appear this beautiful pink color. Uh, you'd see some faint gas and dust, but long exposure photography uh, is how we reveal the, the beautiful pink color of this nebula, the beautiful rosette appearance. This nebula is about 5,000 light years from Earth. It's 130 light years in diameter. If light traveled from one end of the nebula to another, it would take 
130 years. So we have these beautiful nebula. Uh, we just looked at two stellar nurseries uh, that are in our winter sky where new stars are being born. But I'd like to close out our tour with my favorite uh, deep sky object that we can see on New Year's Eve, and that's in Taurus. I didn't want to forget. <laughs> so to find my favorite New Year's Day uh, gift, let's take the three stars of Orion's belt. We'll hang a right to Aldebaran, the eye of the bull, that red giant. And then we'll catch the red eye to the Pleiades. The Pleiades might look like the ear of the bull, or perhaps a, a little micro dipper. We're going to zoom in on that open star cluster. So again, like the star cluster we found in the Rosette Nebula, the Pleiades themselves are another open star cluster, loosely bound together by gravity moving together through space. Pleiades are also known as M45 or Messier 45. And let's zoom in and take a closer look. All right. We looked at a couple of stellar nurseries earlier. That's not what we're looking at here. As we're looking at the Pleiades, this star cluster is moving through. It's just passing through some interstellar gas and dust. We have a lot of B-type stars here. They're very luminous and blue, uh, and they are lighting up that interstellar gas and dust, giving us this beautiful frosty blue glow just in time for the winter. The Pleiades were known to the ancient Greeks as the Seven Sisters. In Japan, they are known as the Subaru. And in fact, the Subaru car logo uh, was inspired by this open star cluster, the Pleiades. Now the Pleiades will be visible to the naked eye in a dark sky if you head outside, find Orion's belt, find the red eye Aldebaran, give your eyes some time to adapt uh, and you'll be able to see that star cluster. All right, so I'll bring us back to the southern sky. That's just a taste of what you can find on New Year's Eve. Uh, I hope you all have uh, a great new year in 2022, full of cosmic cheer a nebular new year, uh, and come back and see us again next week for another edition of Bite Size Buell.